Oh, hello, baby. Hi guys, and I'm really excited today because I've got one of my favorite brands in the whole world ever, Lotus, right here today. This, of course, is an Evora. Now, the Evora, actually, we got a new one last year. It was called the Evora 400. Now, the Evora 400 wasn't a limited edition. It wasn't a sport edition of the regular car. It was actually a whole new car. Substantially changed because the actual platform and architecture had re been reworked as well. They'd done other things to it, like, you know, the, the styling was slightly changed. This was more aggressive at the front. Aerodynamics was better and stuff like that. Uh, that was a great car. I've got a review of that on uh, site motoringme.com and also our YouTube channel. Check it out there. We drove it on track that one. This one we've got on the road. This is actually an Evora 410. What's an Evora 410? Well, an Evora 410 is a sportier, more focused and more hardcore version of a car that is sporty and focused and some would say hardcore. So why do we need it? Well, it's got more, or less actually, it's got more power, as the name 410 suggests, rather than the 400 brake horsepower that you get in the regular Evora out of the 3.5 litre V6 uh, Toyota Camry sourced engine supercharged in this case in the Evora that you get in the regular Evora 400. This one, as the name would suggest, gets 410 brake horsepower. It gets 410 newton meters as well, which is about 300 pounds foot of torque. 0 to 100, if you have the manual, which I do, yay, is 4.2 seconds. With the automatic, it's 4.1 seconds. Ah, so you're thinking, hang on, the automatic is quicker. Yes, it is. But in top speed, this is 300 kilometers per hour, and the automatic is about 290 or 285. So you get slightly less. So there's a trade-off there. What else is the main thing about this car, though? It's not really the power. It's not really the performance. It's actually the weight saving. Now, the interesting thing is that between the Evora and the Evora 400, they saved about 40 kilograms. This car, they've saved 70 kilograms. Now, how the hell have they done that? Well, they've taken the rear seats out for a start, which were kind of redundant in this car anyway. And the stuff at the back that I'll show you in a minute, they've, the roof is carbon fiber. Uh, look at the wheels, new uh, forged alloy wheels, shaved a lot of weight off that. They've taken sound deadening out of it. They've done all kinds of stuff actually to reduce the weight. And inside, for example, uh, in, in the base model, they take the AC out, they take the stereo out, uh, they take a whole bunch of other stuff out. This car, however, of course, because being a Middle East spec car, does have AC, and they've also put the entertainment system and the sat nav back in as well. It's also got a reversing camera, which normally would be deleted. But uh, it doesn't have, uh, on the door panels, they've been trimmed down, so you've got nowhere to put your elbow. Now, the other thing to say about this car, is that uh, the weight reduction, which is quite extensive, actually manages to lower the center of gravity of the car as well by 12 millimeter. In fact, the car itself rides 5 millimeter lower, and the drag coefficient has also gone down from 0 0.36 to 0 0.35. So as I was saying, check this out. This is now a one-piece tailgate here, and it's so light, it's carbon fiber, it's very, very light, so light, in fact, that they haven't bothered to put any gra gas struts in there. In fact, instead, what you get is uh, you get one of these things. So you can just use that to hold it up. There you can see the Toyota V6 supercharged that's in this car now, of course, branded Lo Lotus. One glass, uh, this has now got louvers on it. And additionally, they've taken the glass out of that, that compartment there, that, uh, this bit here as well. That's now a carbon panel. Uh, just remove the glass from there. And one other thing to save weight. They've removed the uh, plastic badging and put stickers instead. That is extreme extreme weight saving. Anyway, I think it's time now to get inside, out of this heat, benefit from that AC that does work, and also away from this wind. Apologies from the wind noise, by the way. It's quite windy here today in the UAE. In fact, I can smell the goats over there. Yeah, lovely. Here we are. It's, it's much easier to get in, he says, as he manages to just about get in. Since they uh, made this narrower and actually lowered it, uh, that's what they did when the, this Evora came out, the Evora 400. But uh, actually, despite my clumsiness there, it is actually a much easier car to get in and out of. Uh, um, let's start it up because uh, the immobilizer might already have kicked in, which then won't allow me to start it up. So the starter button is here. Oh, yes. There you go. So yeah, the key is on this side, but the starter button on this, on this side is not a keyless entry. Now, I just quickly want to show you a few things in the car before we set off. For example, there you can see there's nowhere to put your elbow. They've taken that panel out. 
uh, but they have left buttons for the boot release and for the uh, fuel cap filler release there. The, we've also got electric windows and we've got electric mirrors. So although they've taken stuff out, we've got that. We haven't got automatic lights, um, but we've got light dimmer. We've got a trip computer. If I press the info button there on that stalk, I can go through that. And uh, it tells me the uh, average we've been doing. And also it tells me, so for example, if I open the door, see? It's even got a door indicator although like in this little car surely you would know that the door is open but anyway uh there's your dials the traditional proper analog dials at the top there if you can just make out that's where the digital speedometer is but uh it's quite dark and it's almost it's very hard to see it uh, but it's there and on this side you've got more information including time and uh, temperature and, out and, and stuff like that. Now, uh, in other markets, the Avora 410, this will be blanked out, but here they've got it. They've got the sat nav and the Bluetooth and all the rest of it. So you can go radio and you know phone and everything. It's got Bluetooth and all that. Down here is the AC, and the AC is actually really good in this car. Of course, this one is a manual, otherwise you'd have the automatic buttons down here. Uh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, tiny, tiny transmission tunnel there with a power supply back here. Uh, so that's quite good. And uh, this car is built by Joe Richards. Joe Richards. So shout out to Joe Richards up at uh, the Lotus factory in Hethel, Norfolk, Norfolk in the uh, UK. So uh, he's built this car and I'm driving it today. And in here you've got a, a glove box. And in the glove box you've actually got a charging USB charging cable, which is quite handy. So that's quite good. Check out these seats. I mean, they are thin as well. The rear seats are gone, for example, so that's quite good. They've turned that into luggage area, which is handy. So I can put my bag and tripod and stuff over there. But look at these seats. I mean, they are basically race car seats. And if you can make out, they're made of carbon, as you can see, and uh, they're not adjustable. They're one piece. So that's it. Take it or leave it. And they're incredibly thin. In fact, they only weigh like six kilograms each. That's how light they are. You can adjust them back and forth, but that's about it through that. And uh, up here, the cool stuff, you've got sport mode race mode and uh, that's a door lock and that's the exhaust now so if you don't want if you want it in normal mode but you want the angrier exhaust you can do that does it sound different yeah it does actually uh, let me show you so I'll just rev it in uh, normal mode it does sound pretty good but wait for this sports exhaust so it's a much deeper, more guttural, more angrier and sportier note there. So actually quite nice. I do like it. But for this road here, we're going to go into sports mode and drive it on one of my favorite little roads here. Um, we've actually got cruise control as well. There's cruise control buttons on the steering, so that's handy. But, you know, otherwise, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, it's, it's louder in here, as, we'll, as you'll see when we're on the move. In fact, let's just do that. Man, I am so fortunate and privileged to be driving two manuals in the space of as many weeks. Whoa! It's so rare to get manuals and... Whoa! Ho, ho, ho! That sounds great! Acceleration is pretty good! Whoa! I tell you what. Now, the thing about this car is that you can exploit the performance because it's never too much. You know, there's a lot of torque there, like, oh, as you can see, but... You can exploit it, you can go to the upper edges of it and it's not really a problem because it's it's enough to go fast and it's enough to have fun with but not enough to get you into trouble. And then in addition to that, of course, you know, this is great delivery, is of course, oh, the brakes are great, is the, is the handling. And this is where it's incredible, this is where Lotus scores over everything else. I hope you can hear me. Uh, because they have piped a lot of, well, obviously they've taken the sound deadening out of this car. Uh, so there's a lot of engine roar coming into the uh, cabin right now. And I'm not going into stealth mode. But uh, this is where Lotus comes into its own. Is the handling, the poise, the balance, the grip. I mean, it's absolutely superb. The brakes are stupendously, perfectly tuned for this car. And uh, the steering... The weighting is not as it's not as heavy as you would think. It's a bit light actually, especially on, you know when you're doing this. But there's a lot of feel, you know, and you know you can feel what is going on with the wheel, with the front wheel. You can even feel what's happening with the car, with the with the actual structure of the car, the weight at the front, the weight at the back, you know. Every part of the car. It's not just the steering. It feels like every part of the car is talking to you. I tell you what, 
third gear is actually the best gear for this car on a road like this because it's actually very tractable, can do a lot with it. So keeping in third, still in third. But yeah, it's, and it corners flat. There's no body lean at all. I'm just like, I just changed direction. But I mean, you can hear that's, I think that's probably my bag on my tripod. It's just moving around. And that's the only indication that actually we're changing angle or we're changing direction. But uh, the seat, of course, is absolutely holding me in. This is, this is a race seat, pretty much. This goes into the race cars. Not the most comfortable of seats, I have to be honest. Um, which, you know, is, is astonishing because, you know, as thin and as uh, in, insubstantial as Lotus seats often look. <laughs> this is lovely. This is so beautiful. Uh, as, as insubstantial as they often look, once you're in them, they're normally extremely comfortable and uh, very supportive and you can spend all day in them without any problem. This one, very hard. And, uh, you know, considering that for this market, they've already put the AC back in and put the stereo back in and put the reversing camera back in, you might as well ask them to put the proper Evora seats back in because if you have to have one, you probably need those seats. Oh, ho, ho! <laughs> This is great, but it's so good. And it gives you so much confidence and so much reassurance. It's talking to you the whole time. And the body is moving around, but it's kind of pivoting around. And you know almost exactly what it's doing before it's actually doing it. There is a little bit of lightness at the front. So I don't know if you can call it understeer, but there is a little bit of lightness at the front. It is a light car. So it just takes a moment or literally a hair breadth of a second for it to just well, I mean there it didn't I mean you know and you can actually adjust it on the throttle so yeah I mean I can tighten the line on the throttle it's beautiful it's so playful this is in sports mode don't forget and uh, I dare not put it into race mode I, you, need, you need to be on a track to do that but um, even at the lower speeds you know uh, when the tires are a bit cold or you're on tiles you know, it will kick the back out. You know, it will move around, but it will do it in such a benign manner, you know, that it's actually really enjoyable, really playful and really good fun. But it's, it just grips and goes. Oh, and the engine just screams 7,000 RPM. Woo <laughs> I love this car. This is fantastic. Absolutely awesome. That's fourth gear. Dare I go into, uh, no, no, we're coming up to a corner. The pedals, I mean, I need a bit of practice. I haven't driven a manual for a while. You know, like I said, two manuals in the course of two weeks is quite a rarity for us. And I'm very privileged and pleased to have them. But the pedals are very well placed. And I think with a bit of practice and a bit more skill than I have, you could perfect those heel and toe changes with, with quite, quite a lot of ease. So overall then, this car is fantastic. I love it. It's fantastic. You should all buy it. No, you shouldn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> what is he on about? What is he saying? No, you should get the regular Evora. This car really, the ride is much harder on this car than the regular Evora. It rides much nicer. And, um, you know, and over like yellow stripes and stuff, it can actually be almost, oh my God, please let these yellow stripes end. Why did they paint them on this tarmac, please? It can get a bit much. Quite frankly, uh, what I would uh, the way I would sum this car up, and this car is it's, so here's a funny thing. It's the Lotus Evora 410, right? So the price in the UAE is 410, 410,000. I think it's actually less, but once they put these options back in, it's 410. Um, I think for 20 grand or 30 grand less, you can get uh, an Evora 400. And what I would recommend then is to get an Evora 400 with a manual gearbox. And quite frankly, you'll get you know 95 percent of this performance. 95% of the handling and the grip, uh, but 120% or 130% of the uh, everyday usability, uh, if you can ascribe such a thing to a Lotus, which you can, to be fair, uh, and comfort. So that's the one I would go for. I'd go for the manual version of that and have some of the sound deadening and the creature comforts back in. Uh, but otherwise, top marks. However, if you do a lot of track days, if that's your thing, if you do a lot of track days, then get this one. Yeah, then get this one. Then, then you need this one. But otherwise, get the other one. So there you go. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that review. Uh, I certainly enjoyed making it for you today. That's for sure. Do please check us out. MotoringME.com and find us on social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, please do like, share and subscribe. That would be great. 
and you can also follow me of course as well you don't have to but it would be nice if you did it'd be good to see you there thanks so much for watching until the next one shoot it or drive that's the dilemma you always find yourself in okay i haven't got it for that long and this takes a lot of time so shoot it or drive it you tell me